Hi everyone, welcome to episode 8. So in the last few episodes we've been creating a system to figure out the start and end points of uh, the sort of passages in the map. And we've been displaying those passages with simple debug lines. So in this episode we actually want to replace those debug lines with the actual passages. Now as you know, our map is essentially a grid of tiles, each of which can be on or off, meaning that it's a wall or it's not a wall. So uh, if we have a line representing our passageway, all we need to do is to figure out which tiles lie beneath that line so that we can turn those into non-wall tiles. Now to begin with, we need to find the equation for our line. So we can do this first of all by looking at the change in x and change in y over the length of the line. So uh, if our line ends up in block 4 on the x-axis and starts in block 0, it will give us a change in x, or delta x equal to 4 minus 0, which of course is 4. And we can do the same thing for delta y, it will be equal to 1 minus 0, which is 1. And we can now write the gradient of our line as delta y over delta x, which in this case is 1 over 4. And as you've probably heard, the equation for a straight line is simply the gradient multiplied by the x value plus uh, some value for the y-intercept, which I'll just call c. So our line can be expressed as y equals 1 over 4 times x, which of course is just x over 4, plus 0, so we can just leave that out. So using this, we're now able for each value of x to plot the corresponding y value, um, which is all very well, but we need to constrain this to our grid. So what we really want to say is that the actual value for y only increases once this y value passes a certain threshold, namely the, the sort of point between 0 and 1, which of course is a half. So we could say that y increases if our gradient, delta y over delta x, multiplied by x plus a half is greater than or equal to 1. Now to simplify this, we could multiply everything through by delta x to get uh, delta y multiplied by x plus delta x over 2 is greater than or equal to delta x. So this is what we're going to be using in our algorithm, and the algorithm is going to run something like this. We'll start off by defining a value called ga, which stands for gradient accumulation, and this is equal to delta x over 2. So that's this uh, value over here. And then we enter a loop. And inside of the loop, we say, OK, x increments by 1. So each step, we've got x incrementing. And uh, each step, we're increasing gradient accumulation by delta y. So Instead of multiplying delta y by x, we're just adding delta y each time that x increases, which is kind of the same thing. And then we're saying, if gradient accumulation is greater than or equal to delta x, this part, then we want to increase our actual y value. So that's when this would jump from here up to here. And we will then subtract delta x from gradient accumulation so that this uh, whole process can start again. Now, of course, this algorithm is currently assuming a bunch of things, like, for example, that delta x is greater than delta y. If we had a steep line such as this one, then, uh, of course, we wouldn't want to be increasing x each frame, but rather decreasing y each step and having x be the one that is increased uh, using this gradient accumulation, which of course changes all of the other things. Delta x here would become delta y, delta y becomes delta x, uh, everything swaps around in these cases, so that's all stuff that we'll have to of course think about when we are implementing it into the code. But I hope this little preamble has made things a little bit clearer, so uh, without any further delay, let us begin programming. Okay, so inside of the map generator script, I'm going to go down to the create passage method, and just below that, I'm going to create a method called getLine, which returns a list of coordinates for each point in the line. And this method will take in two coordinates, a starting point for the line, and an end point for the line. And let's begin just by creating this list of coordinates to store the line in. So that's equal to a new list of coordinates. And let's say int x is equal to our 
starting tile x and int y is equal to our starting tile y. Now let's figure out our delta x and delta y. So int dx equals 2 dot tile x minus from dot tile x. And similarly, delta y is equal to 2 dot tile y minus from dot tile y. Now, assuming for the moment that delta x is greater than or equal to delta y, then as I was demonstrating earlier, inside of the loop, we're going to want to increment x each step. Now, uh, whether we increment it positively or negatively, of course, depends on the sign of delta x. So let's create an int step, which is just the value uh, by which we're going to increment x each step. So uh, we want this to be either negative 1 or positive 1. So we'll just set it equal to mathf dot sign with a g of delta x. And uh, this function returns a float. So I'm actually just going to use the math.sign function so I don't have to bother with casting it to an integer. Um, and then we also want a value for our gradient step. So that's the step where our y value changes, once again, assuming that delta x is greater than delta y. So this will be equal to the sign of delta y. Okay, now let us actually state int longest is equal to the absolute value of delta x and int shortest is equal to the absolute value of delta y. Now, if longest is in fact less than shortest, then uh, we know that they're inverted. So we want to sort of flag that fact. So up here, let's create a bool inverted equal to false. And we can say inverted is in fact true. And we then want to say longest is actually equal to the absolute value of delta y and shortest is equal to the absolute value of delta x. And then instead of, uh, instead of incrementing x each step, we'll be incrementing y each step. So we'll say step is equal to the sine of delta y and we'll be incrementing delta x in the gradient step. So gradient step will be equal to the sine of delta x. Okay, so now let's define our integer gradient accumulation. And as I explained, this will be the longest over two. Well, it was delta x over two in my demonstration, but uh, since this is now sort of accommodating the fact that delta y could be greater than delta x, we will make it work for both cases by just saying longest over two. And then we'll have our loop for int i equals naught, i less than longest, i plus plus. So we want to start off by adding to the line the current point, so that's a new coordinate using x and y. And then if we have inverted then we want to say y plus equals step. Otherwise, x plus equals step. And uh, we want to, of course, increase gradient accumulation by the shortest. And if gradient accumulation is greater than or equal to longest, then we want to say, once again, if inverted, then x increases by the gradient step. Otherwise, y increases by the gradient step. And finally, we say gradient accumulation minus equals longest. And at the end of all of this, we return our line. So to quickly show our algorithm in action, I've just created this uh, little grid where I can click on two tiles and it just connects it up using our getLine method. And uh, you can see that the lines are all very nice. And so all that remains to be done now is to use this in our create passage method to actually form the passageways.
Okay, so let's go up to the create passage method and create a list of coordinates for our line. This is equal to get line and we'll pass in tile A and tile B. And we want to go through each of the coordinates in this line and be able to specify some radius to uh, draw each point in the passage. So uh, let's create a little method void, whoops, draw circle. This will take in a coordinate C and an integer for the radius. I want to do a little for loop for int x equal to negative radius, uh, while x is less than or equal to radius. We increment x. And uh, let's just copy this for the y value. Just rename x to y. And now uh, we'll say if x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to our radius squared, in other words, it's inside of the circle, then we want to create an integer real x for the actual point that we're drawing. So that will be coordinate dot tile x plus x and int real y equal to coordinate dot tile y plus y. Now we want to check if these are inside of the map. So we can say if, and we can use our in map range method, just pass in real x and real y. If they're inside of the map, then we simply want to say map real x real y is equal to zero. And I think I'm just going to rename real x to draw x and real y to draw y. All right, so now we just need to go through each of the coordinates in our line. So for each coord c in line, we want to say draw circle, we'll pass in c and we'll pass in a radius, probably just use one. And uh, let's go into Unity and run this and hope it works. Cool, we've got passageways. Isn't that exciting? Uh, let's see what happens if we uh, bump up the radius to two. Predictably, we've got bigger passageways. And uh, just interested to see what it would look like if we really make the radius quite big. Yeah, looks interesting. Okay, cool, so that's the end of episode eight. Uh, please leave a comment if there's anything you'd like to see covered in future episodes. Until then, cheers.